seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. We understand that it is necessary for all things to come to pass as it was written by John in the book of Revelation, as he received the revelation from Jesus Christ, from the ascended master, Jesus Christ, who delivered it to him by his angel. We understand that this revelation is for the fulfillment of the great golden age that we await. It is a sign of overcoming and fulfillment and the balancing of every jot and tittle of the law. The book of Revelation is a marvelous handbook as to our very private and personal path, individual Christhood, and of the entire planetary Armageddon against which our Armageddon, personal and individual, must also be set. To the seven archangels, therefore, is given the assignment to deliver to the mankind of Earth the accumulation of karma that has been set aside by the dispensation of Jesus Christ, who came to bear the sins of the world that you and I, during this 2,000-year period, could also walk the path of individual Christhood and approximate his demonstration of the law of truth and love. This bearing of the sins of the world is borrowing time for the light bearers and the saints to increase their own incarnation of that Christ person. We come to the end of the age. What have mankind done with a great gift of mercy and grace by Jesus Christ? Some have been diligent and some have used their freedom to sow again the wind and to reap now the whirlwind. Some have taken the time of freedom to enjoy the pleasures of this world, and they have not been in a mode of accountability or responsibility for the balancing of those sins which our Lord has borne for us. Therefore, we understand that forgiveness of sin and then transmutation of sin becomes the responsibility of those who aspire to the path all the way home through the crucifixion, the resurrection, and the ascension. We, therefore, cannot pass as individuals or as a planet into a new age of Aquarius, into the golden age, without settling our accounts. And that is what the book of Revelation is all about. Every man is judged according to his works, his karma. Thus, the wrath of God is the white fire whereby he returns to us our personal account, our accountability that we might work it out in love and service and not be found wanting when we must report to the Almighty at the fulfillment of this lifespan. This is a marvelous teaching because it makes us to understand why we gather for healing, why we are pursuing wholeness, and how we must do it according to the laws of God set forth so plainly if we will only read and run by the Holy Spirit. And so it is written, I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name stand on the sea of glass having the harps of God. The path which we walk, including the healing of body and mind, is a path that has a purpose. It is to get the victory over the beast. The beast is the synthetic self, the not-self, sometimes called the ego, or Paul referred to it as the carnal mind. It is the illusory mind, it is the mind of duality, and through that beast, we bring upon ourselves every form of limitation, sin, disease, and death. Therefore, the victory in healing is the victory over the duplicity of the mind that has not been replaced by the mind of God. 
So it is written, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. This mind contains the power of healing, whereas the erroneous mind of error itself is the cause of disease. Thus those who stand on the sea of glass mingled with fire, having the dominion over the fire element and the water, the etheric body and the desire over the entire astral plane, these therefore show that dominion not only over the beast, but over his image. The image of the beast is the false image, which is the antithesis of Christ's image, after which image you and I are made. We are made in the image of Christ, but we are not outpicturing it because here and there we have accepted the imaging forth upon ourselves, our bodies, our minds, our actions, our emotions, the false image. So as God works with, it, with us, as we work with him, as Jesus said, the Father worketh hitherto, and I work. We work together with the Father for wholeness in this temple. We understand there is a science and a psychology to the understanding of why there is the absence of wholeness and what we must correct. Dare we come before the altar of God with envy or hatred in our heart and then ask for healing? It is not consistent with cosmic law. We must cast the moat out of our own eye, and then we shall see, and we shall see wholeness, and therefore we will be whole. The victory is over the mark of the beast. The beast, the image, the mark, and the number of his name. This beast is revealed earlier in the book of Revelation as having the number 666. So the mark being the stamp of the consciousness of the beast, whereby we tend to think in terms of the illusions and dualities of the world. And the number actually being the genetic code of the beast that is the antithesis of the Christed one. These then have the harps of God. And it's a very interesting thing. The harp has many strings. We are capable, therefore, of sounding the strings of the vibrations of God and the vibration of the harp and its many tones and chords is a sounding of the chord of our own electronic presence, our own aura, our own unique vibration, the vibration that is the vibration of our own Christ self. And this Christ self, its very chord of harmony is the healing of the four lower bodies. So the playing of the harps is not simply a heavenly pastime. It is a mighty science to draw forth the energy of God. And as you know, sound is color, and color also produces the harmony within the forms. So they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb. This song is a mantra also of healing. You remember that Moses raised up the brazen serpent in the wilderness, and when the people gazed upon it, they were healed. So God told Moses to do this. The brazen serpent is the sign of the medical profession. It is the caduceus. It is the sign of the raised kundalini, of the white fire from the base chakra to the crown. And the two wings, being the wings of Mercury, show the wings of the mind and the two petals of the third eye. Thus the song of Moses is also a song that draws forth from the central sun the energy of healing, and also the Lamb of God, who is the eternal Christ. And this is the great song that they sing. Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty, just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? I am that I am, for thou only art holy, for all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. This is a song of acceptance of the justice of God. 
and we must come to terms with our God if we would come for healing. Do we harbor somewhere in the folds of the garment of consciousness a resentment of the Almighty because he has placed upon us the yoke or the burden of sickness or infirmity or incompleteness? Do we feel it is unjust? If we have a sense of injustice, it may very well be the sense of injustice which is the cause of our problem. Recently, a student asked me, how can I be healed of the extreme difficulty I have in loving my mother? I cannot forgive my mother. And the answer that came to my heart from God was this. Can you forgive yourself, forgiving yourself, your mother, in this life? Can you forgive God for giving you the, this mother in this life? Who is the God that gave you this mother in this life? The God that gave you this mother in this life whom you will not forgive is the God who is the law of your own karma. Can you forgive yourself for giving you this mother in this life? And as he proceeded to tell me all these things that his mother had done for which he could not forgive her, I could see in the record of his karma that he had done all these things. And life in its great love, God in his great mercy, must bring to him an understanding of what it feels like to be on the receiving end of these particular manifestations which he perceived as cruelty or hardness of heart or carelessness, non-caring, neglect of the children and so forth. All these things he had done before, but he did not know how much hurt he had put upon life. This is not punishment, this is education. Karma is never for punishment, although we experience it many times as a sense of punishment because it hurts. But God in his great law of forgiveness and love, rather than condemning us to everlasting punishment for our misdeeds, allows us to be on the receiving end of those very deeds so that we can look upon them and say, ah, there but for the grace of God go I. Instead of having a sense of injustice about that person, we now have compassion for all life whom we have abused or misused. Now we can indeed forgive this woman and we must forgive ourselves for forgiveness is the open door to healing. Therefore, let us pray urgently and very personally that we understand all things that come to us come for our education, either as returning karma or as ver veritable injustices in life that we then have the opportunity to heal, to undo, to make as justice. God has a right to test the metal of one who would be with him in heaven, and therefore you may have a burden upon you in this hour that is not caused by karma at all, but is an opportunity for you to gain mastery and witness to the glory of God and the use of his mighty name, I am that I am, for this mighty name itself is the power of healing and God wants you to know that he wants you to know that sickness is unreal and he wants you to have the joy and happiness of declaring his name claiming your wholeness recognizing in the dignity of your sonship that you are worthy to be whole and therefore when you pray and you receive that healing you have an understanding that God is no respecter of persons of his pure sons and therefore the Christ where you are is able to heal you and I am not uniquely endowed with any such power for only God can heal. Nevertheless, I am happy to commune with you and to offer the prayers and invocations for your healing. 
This is a miraculous hour in cosmic history. We realize that all that returns to us is to teach us compassion. How much we learn compassion for all life through pain. I had this experience in my life when I first experienced severe pain. All of a sudden I realized people all over the world were having pain and I should pray for them. And I never knew how terrible pain could be. And so my heart was softened and I knew the love of God and I knew his love for me and for all these people and I did not forget to pray without ceasing from then on. And various forms of adversity have given to me by the grace of God the compassion that I know is Jesus' own heart. So the acceptance of what is as justice and then the realization if justice by karma, by temptation, by testing is a condition that we understand needs correction, needs writing, then we submit to the law and we say, oh God, help me with this problem, help me with this condition. I accept thy judgments. I know that whatever is here I must deal with for my mastery, for my path, show me how. I read an article in the Los Angeles Times today about a man in New York who had just been released from prison, having wrongly been accused and condemned, and he had spent 24 years of his life in prison, and he had escaped narrowly the electric chair before he spent that 24 years, his sentence having been commuted. He was only an hour away from going to his death, entirely prepared and watched those who supposedly were in the crime with him go to their deaths before him. Then his sentence was commuted and he spent 24 years trying to undo it. He finally did, he is free. He sued the state of New York. They accorded him a million dollars for the injustice. But he said that is not enough. I have lost my life. I have not seen my nieces and nephews grow up. I have not been able to be a father. I have lost everything. I have not been able to live my life. And he was extremely bitter. And he had a great sense of resentment toward the law itself. One can certainly understand this. One can certainly understand the great trial that has come upon this man. But we must say in our hearts, in the most extreme situation, a mighty fiat of the Lord. There is no injustice anywhere in the universe. Paul was imprisoned, and he used the opportunity to commune with God, to write letters, to glorify his name, and the angel delivered him from prison. Many of the great martyrs and heroes have been imprisoned. It is not whether we are behind bars or not that counts. It is whether we are the prisoner of our own ego, our own lust, our own envy, our own resentment, our own hatred. I trust, therefore, that you may understand we are all prisoners of planet Earth. None of us can get off unless we take a spaceship one of these days or a space shuttle, but we cannot get off this earth alive, except it be by the power of the ascension. We are prisoners of our karma. And when we begin to love and only love and dissolve everything that comes to us by love, then we begin to experience freedom. So you see, this man, whether justly resentful or not, is no more free than when he was in prison because he carries the same resentment not only against the state, but ultimately that resentment is against God. So when we say we cannot forgive someone or someone wronged us, ultimately we must stop and say, can I forgive God for bringing this circumstance into my life? And then who is that God? 
I am the God of my life. I am the authority in my world. I have used God's law. I have sent forth injustice. It is cosmic justice that that injustice return to me. Here it is at my doorstep. What will I do? Will I live with it forever? Will I now multiply it again and create a bigger injustice because I am resentful? Or will I call upon the Lord, invoke his Holy Spirit, his violet flame, and ask that all life that I have wronged anywhere be blessed, be relieved of this burden? Do I say, O oh God, place upon me the burdens that I have imposed upon other people in all of my past embodiments. Let them not suffer because of some misdeed. Let them be lifted. Let them know life without the weight of my sin upon them. Let it come back to my heart. O oh Christ in me, by the violet flame of the Holy Ghost, transmute now that karma, balance that energy, turn my hatred into love, turn my envy into givingness, turn my selfishness into a pouring forth of thy beauty and love. O oh God, let me live to serve thee, for I know that in serving thee I shall be made whole. Therefore, when we enter into the service of the Lord, we know that we are whole. This is the process of regeneration. Service is giving of all that we are, and when we empty ourselves each day, God fills us again with light. And each in filling is a rejuvenation, a regeneration. We are recharged to give of ourselves again and again and again. And the more we are self-emptied, the more we are filled, the more we ourselves are becoming that Christ who is our wholeness and our healing. Will you not sing the song of Moses and the Lamb and say with me, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord? Who shall not fear thee, O Lord? And glorify thy name, I am that I am. And glorify thy name, I am that I am. For thou only art holy. For thou only art holy. For all nations shall come and worship before thee. For all nations shall come and worship before thee. For thy judgments are made manifest. For thy judgments are made manifest. When we say to God, the mighty I am presence, thou only art holy, we are saying nothing else is holy. This disease is not holy. This sin is not holy. This carnal mind is not holy. Therefore, it has no staying power. Thou alone art holy, and therefore only thou that art holy can exist and be and continue to be, and there is no point in time or space that can contain thy unholiness, for God is with me. You see, we make gods of our ailments, our burdens, our limitations, our mortality, and by making gods of them, tolerating them, accommodating them, living around them and through them, we sustain them. And therefore it is important in the beginning and the end of the Bible to remember, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou alone art holy. God is holy where I am, say it. God is holy where I am. God is the living God where I am. God is the living God where I am. God is the just God where I am. God is the just God where I am. I am his servant son. I am his servant son. I glorify his name, I am that I am. I glorify his name, I am that I am. Oh God, come 
into my temple and heal me now. Oh God, come into my temple and heal me now. Oh God, come into my temple and heal me now. Oh God, come into my temple and heal me now. We find that the great miracle that is witnessed after John sees the singing of these verses and the acceptance of the justice and judgment of God, that the temple of the tabernacle and of the testimony in heaven was opened. The seven angels came out, having the seven plagues, clothed in pure and white linen, having their breasts girded with golden girdles. And therefore one of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels seven golden vials full of the wrath of God, who liveth forever and ever. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power. And no man was able to enter into the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. The following chapter then speaks about each angel and the pouring out of world karma and how the pouring out of these vials containing that karma affects the earth, the fire, the air, the water. So we see that we are on the earth and karma is returning. In the midst of this, we call forth the Holy Spirit and the violet flame because Jesus said, the days should be shortened for the elect and for the elect's sake it would be done. And if it were not done, that the elect themselves should scarcely be saved. That shortening of the days of the elect means an acceleration of spirals, an acceleration of the balancing of karma, an acceleration of wholeness. It means that we have opportunity here and now to call upon the name of the Lord to be filled with light. And because our desire to be whole is based on the desire to serve and to love, to set life free, that karma can be shortened. It can be dissolved by the Holy Spirit and we can be free from our burdens. This is the great dispensation that is taught to us through the everlasting gospel that is brought by the angel in heaven and by the mysteries of God that come with the seventh angel. The mystery of transmutation of the sacred fire prophesied by the prophets of the Old Testament that we should have our garments washed pure and white. We should be purged. And God said, I will remember their sin no more. When God forgets the sin, the cause of your disease is removed. When the cause is removed, all that remains is for you to forgive yourself, accept the law of forgiveness through your Christ self, and also remember neither the sin nor the disease any longer. The Father worketh hitherto, and I work. You must work. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. You must work for healing by doing what God does. He has said what he will do. Now you must do those things that he said he would do through you. And you will find that the path of healing will be a permanent wholeness when you understand your responsibility. Sudden faith healing or healing by belief may be the driving back of that physical effect into the etheric body without the balancing of karma. This has been shown to me by the masters of healing at inner levels. If there is not transmutation, if there is not a balancing of karma, you can by the mind, by the will, by belief, by emotion, by affirmation, drive back the effects, physical effects, into the subconscious or into the etheric body. You may not experience it again in this lifetime, but you may be born again with the same disease and the same problem and the same karma to work out because you didn't fulfill the law that every jot and tittle should be balanced. This is why we use the violet flame 
This is why we give dynamic decrees. So let us call to God for perfect, permanent wholeness in all of our members, in all of our four lower bodies. And let us realize that the annunciation of Archangel Gabriel, of the coming of the Son of God to the Virgin, is the ever-occurring birth of the man-child in you by the Divine Mother. And through that man-child, the laws of karma can be set aside and you can walk the earth in your garments of individual Christhood. Thus Gabriel Archangel announcing the birth of Jesus also announces the birth of Christ in you. We see the two events of Archangels, the Annunciation and the Vials, and we understand in this teaching the balance of how we fit in the midst, how we can overcome and not be overcome by world karma, but work through it and also attain the reunion with God. Burn through, O Ma Chohan, bind the demons and discarnates, and give her joy and fullness of life. O God, seven mighty archangels, thy power is the omnipotence of the Godhead. Use it as thou wilt, O God. Let thy will be done. Bind the cause and core of this condition I call for the rod of Joseph. Saint Germain, come forth with thy mighty power. Even so, not my will but thine be done, O God. God bless you. I'm going to use the emerald matrix here. O oh, beloved God, Mercury, beloved Hermes, I call for thy miracle light. O oh, emerald matrix of the immaculate heart of Mary, Thou art the purest light of perfection in this body, and we accept it in this hour. Amen. Responsibility of accountability for our own world, our own universe, our own soul, our own heart and mind. Blaze the light of 10,000 suns. Blaze a light through, Almighty One of God. Blaze a light through, Almighty One of God. Blaze a light through, and let God's will be done. I call for restoration according to the capacity of the individual to forgive herself and forgive all life. So as we forgive, we are forgiven, O God. So therefore, we blaze forth the light of forgiveness from our hearts. We blaze it to all life. And we know in thy infinite mercy it shall return to us and it shall fulfill its perfect work. In love of God, O Holy One, we accept it done in this hour. Amen. Shining one of love and light, go forth to perform the work of God. So we praise God that, that you are preserved. Yes. Alive and whole, and you have every all your faculties, which is very important. It was a miracle. The mind, the brain, and so forth. So the point of vulnerability is the right foot. Yes. So now that's what we're going to work on. The point of vulnerability of consciousness. Your name? Michelle Jervis. <clears throat> Beloved, mighty I am presence, we thank you, O living God, in this hour. We thank you for the victory of the light. We thank you for the protection of the mind and soul and body, the protection of the spinal cord, the nervous system, the heart, and all of the organs of this body. We thank you, O living word, and now we seek to understand the lesson. Beloved Jesus Christ, thou Piscean conqueror, beloved Saint Germain, hierarch of Aquarius, we call your attention now to this right foot and ankle. Blaze a light through, burn through, and clear the way for God victory now. Find all opposition to understanding, and the putting of the right foot forward to stand on that understanding, to walk with it, to work with it, and to devote one's life to it. Find all opposition to the great God of freedom and to God love, and the power of the movement of the age of Aquarius and the figure of Aquarius. Blaze a light through, I call for the full power of the seat of the soul chakra, and and the solar plexus now. I demand the transmutation and the healing of the cause and core of this vulnerability. By 
mind, therefore, all absence of vigilance in the four lower bodies in this life and all previous lives to the path of God mastery and the path of God love. Blaze a light through. Open now the gate of opportunity, beloved Portia, goddess of justice. Blaze a light of God justice. Blaze a light of the Almighty through. Blaze and blaze and blaze a light through. I am demanding the full power of the sacred fire for the opening of the consciousness of the Christ self of this soul, for the teaching of this soul as to that which must be healed, must be balanced and corrected. Please, the violet flame into it now. I call for perfection and wholeness and healing from the etheric, mental, and astral bodies through the chakras to the perfect manifestation of the power of Almighty God to stand on the right foot with the mighty angel of the Lord to hold the book of the law and to deliver the word of understanding to all who come to this soul and stand ignorant of that law. I summon therefore, soul of light, the balancing of this residue of karma in you for the preaching of the word, for the teaching of the little children, for the transfer of the wisdom of the Lord Jesus Christ as that Piscean conqueror who stands, the one with beautiful feet upon the hillsides of the world preaching the gospel. I invoke his electronic presence over you and the electronic presence of your Christ self. Now let you be reminded of neglect and may you fill the universe. Fill the universe with the joy of God's wisdom. Fill the universe with his word and rejoice in this opportunity to live and breathe and serve to set life free, not the least of which is your own blessed soul. In the name I am that I am, I seal you in the protection of Archangel Michael. Bind that entity of fear. Bind the cause and core of fear. Bind it now, beloved Archangel Michael. Assign your legions of light for the protection now of this soul of light. Let God's will be done. Lo, I am fearlessness flamed by the power of rayolite. So be fearless, for God is victorious in you. So be fearless, for God is victorious in you now. In the name of mighty victory, amen. You're welcome. It is the hour of 11 and the hour of victory. I'm going to look forward to seeing you next Wednesday. And I'm grateful to have been here for this period. Mighty I am presence from the heart of God and the great central Son, by the body and blood of Jesus Christ, be thou made whole, be thou made whole, be thou made whole. In the name I am that I am, by the full power of the body and blood of Jesus Christ, be thou made whole. I am the companion of wholeness. I am compelling the wholeness of the Holy Ghost. Descend now into these temples by the power of the body and blood of Jesus Christ. I accept it done this hour in full power. Amen. Let us sing unto the Lamb on Mount Zion. 
Let us move to the Mount Zion for our victory. Let us follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. Let us move with the Lamb his voice, his heart, his consciousness, even the Lord Christ universally manifest with us now.